And one of the things that isn't talked about very much when it comes to Lyme or late stage Lyme or its co-infections is the psychological aspect of it. I mean, if you like read a list somewhere online, it'll say brain fog or cognitive impairment or some kind of disassociative behavior. But I mean, it really is a big deal the way that it affects mental health. I think I've mentioned before that I am fortunate enough to have a community and people surrounding me that can really reflect back, like, whoa, this is a symptom. This is not your regular behavior. But there are times and definitely in the beginning when it hit its crux point, when it was at its peak, that I was so disassociated and in so much terror that, I mean, I literally did not know where I was or what was happening. And I would need someone to repeat to me in a cyclical way, you're okay, yes, this is a symptom. I couldn't be left alone. I couldn't leave the house. I mean, this is related to my nervous system as well. It would flare up this PTSD type experience. You know, it goes along in combination with being like light sensitive, sound sensitive, everything sensitive. But eyes open, eyes closed, when those moments are there, it's like literal terror and nightmares. It's the stuff that, that like somebody writing a horror movie would come up with as like an evil plan. I wish it upon nobody. You know, there's hallucinations. And then certainly dark thoughts come in around you know, being suicidal or, God, just wanting to die, yeah. I mean, one of the running themes that, that can arise and also has a visceral experience, it's not just in the mind, right? You're so physically uncomfortable and then there's this like horrific ongoing dialogue and non-linear, unrelatable perception about what's happening and you're so tired I mean that was my experience I was so tired like the husk of a human tired but then the fear would propel me to be looking outward my eyeballs would be rolling back in your head and I, I, don't, I don't say this to be dramatic I speak to it because I think people don't know people don't know how intense this actually can be and how it can present itself and often people go years undiagnosed and you know these are like peak moments where there's the perfect storm and the immune system goes and things you know start to really show up in an in, in exaggerated manner these are peak moments from something that might have been going on for a really long time so they end up you know institutionalized or being sent to a psychiatrist and medicated when really it's these bacteria gnawing gnawing at your central nervous system or gut, depending on the gut-mind relationship. Really, hell on earth in the psychological realm of this illness. And I speak to it so that if you're going through it and you're not diagnosed, you are so not alone and like keep pushing. And if you don't know, you don't know, right? So. good to be educated and also when you read that little list and there's just one little fevers aches pains chills like flushing in the body on the on, 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 disassociation yeah like you're functioning from a bubble of another dimension trying to look through and it's like causing anxiety just to see two people talking I mean it's 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 beyond it's living hell I feel like that's less true for me right now I go in and out of those terror episodes and that the running the running thought when those things do kick up is I'm not okay. That's a really loud one. I'm not okay. And then the feeling that goes along with it is I'm going to die. I'm going to faint or I'm going to throw up, you know. And often the talk down is like, okay, those are the three worst things. Then how do I, it's soften here. But feeling like my brain's on fire and when you go to the hospital because your whole body's in seizure and your brain's on fire and you think you're dying. It's like after that and those there's nothing they can do for you but give you an Ativan and send you home because they don't recognize this illness. 
you learn or I learned to soften and navigate that, you know, and even now the scariest part for me is when a new symptom arises because it's almost like, okay, okay, I, okay, this is somewhat familiar, right? And it's that unknowing that's so scary, that unknowing that just whoo, takes the ground out from underneath me. New symptoms will really shatter my foundation of this very fragile, I'm okay, I'm centered, I'm in this, you know, I'm being fortified, this is a teaching an initiation I can soften and learn here. I'm supported and held. A new symptom can really just as a mental health, you know, advocation. Sometimes stuff that looks like depression, sometimes, you know, things that have been going on for many, many years could be bacteria in your gut, could be parasites, could be worth looking into it in another way. I certainly never would have known to test for Lyme unless somebody really yelled that out to me and that's how it came, right? Somebody actually knew at the clinic I was referred to and fought to get into, oh, you have this. Like, what a relief. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this uh, is educational in any way to create this little window into this Lyme experience and blessings. Thriving health for us all. Yeah.